The beauty regimes of the Georgian era could outshine even the most bizarre modern trends. The Georgians were very concerned about how they looked, from their porcelain white skin to their long hair. Apparently, the lure of a pretty face in makeup became so strong in the Georgian period and was considered so irresistible that parliament actually considered passing a law to protect men from being duped by painted ladies. With that being said, beauty treatments were widespread in Georgian Britain. Here are seven of the strangest and most bizarre ones. The Georgians would have been completely perplexed by our insatiable desire to have the perfect sun-kissed tan. In the 18th century, having a suntan was a sure sign that you were working outside, while the noble and wealthy classes stayed inside and away from the sun. For both men and women, porcelain white skin was the most basic and perhaps most well-known fashion in Georgian era. Lead was the main component of skin whitening creams and powders along with vinegar and horse manure. These creams and powders helped to create that all-important never-been-outdoors look when applied liberally to the face and neck. Lips and cheeks were tinted with yet more lead, this time colored with a carmine, a bright red pigment obtained from the aluminium salt of carminic acid, or even with mixes containing high highly toxic mercury, to emphasize the whiteness and highlight the veins. Given the widespread use of lead, it came as no surprise that Georgians began to experience serious reactions to their makeup. The cost of following fashion was high, ranging from eye problems, to digestive issues, and even to death in extreme cases. It wasn't cheap either to get the coveted porcelain skin tone that fashionistas in Georgian era adored. Whether or not skin creams were harmful, they were an expensive addition to a woman's makeup bag and there were few options for those looking for affordable beauty. The popular image of fashionable women wearing enormous and flamboyant wigs at the end of the 18th century is inaccurate. Although there was a lot of tethering hair, most of it was real and wigs were only worn by men in the 18th century. Using a pair of bellows, a device designed to provide a powerful blast of air, Hair powder made of flour and starch was applied to the head to achieve the fashionable pale hair color. This was done by both men and women. The wealthy employed an army of stylists to achieve the typical Georgian big haired appearance. The stylists erected elaborate structures atop their heads around wooden frames that were padded with additional sections, frequently made of horse hair. Additionally, curling tongs were created. This had wooden handles and two metal prongs making them look like blunt scissors. After the prongs were heated in the fire, the hair was wrapped around the prongs and held in place until the curl had formed. Clay rollers also were applied to the wig or hair as an alternative by heating them in the oven. The most elaborate hairstyles would remain in place for days or even weeks, and heads would frequently be adorned with wax, fruits and other decorations like flowers or even model sailing ships. Our fashionable men and women occasionally contracted lice from their enormous headgear, but the Georgians had a solution for that as well. It was possible to use specially designed rods to scratch the lice bites while maintaining their fashionable hairstyles by sliding them between the layers of hair. There was always the option of treating the lice with mercury if they got really itchy, but since this could make people crazy or die, a scratching rod was usually preferred. Beauty patches, also known as mouche, were small pieces of black velvet, silk or satin that were put on the face to cover imperfections like smallpox scars and white lead damage or just for decoration. These patches were very popular for a long time and were often kept in very pretty containers. The position of these skin patches eventually came to be associated with coded meanings in the same way that fans could be used to send a secret message. For instance, a Tory wore a patch on the right side of their face to indicate their political allegiance, while a wig wore a patch on the left. In a more intimate context, a patch in the corner of the eye could be a way to invite a potential partner. Patches weren't just for the rich and like face creams. A small amount of clipped mouse skin would work just as well if you couldn't afford the finely shaped silk and velvet. The Regency face mask known as Fard which was used to treat sunburn and cutaneous eruptions, is far less known than the white Georgian faces and large hair. But that doesn't mean it wasn't a common beauty ritual for the time. Sweet almond oil, honey and spermaceti, a waxy substance found in the head of a sperm whale, were combined to make fart, which was then applied to the face and left on for the night. 
The recipe first published in 1811 was reprinted decades later and one would only assume it was used for a long time. It shouldn't come as a surprise that people frequently lost their eyebrows because lead was frequently applied to the face. As a result, fashionistas in Georgian era adopted a novel strategy and began to shave or remove any remaining brow hair before applying a new one, coloring it with lead or burnt cork. There were sporadic mentions of a strange new fashion as black brows became increasingly popular. Matthew Pryor, a well-known poet, wrote a satirical poem in 1718 about Helen and Jane, who had eyebrows made of mouse skin. Although there isn't much evidence for mouse skin brows, they are mentioned in satire as early as the 18th century. It shouldn't come as a surprise that our Georgian beauties didn't have perfect teeth because the upper class ate all kinds of sugary treats. As a result, tooth powders, also called dentifrice, were used to whiten teeth. Cuttlefish and soda bicarbonate were frequently among their components, as was the enigmatic spirit of vitriol. This mineral, which is now known as sulfuric acid and is highly corrosive, certainly whitened the teeth, but primarily because it completely removed the enamel. It should not come as a surprise that many Georgians required dental surgery which were without anesthesia. The wealthiest patients could choose to have a replacement into the socket after the problematic tooth was extracted with live tooth inserted directly from a donor. Some of these live teeth had actually came from dead people's mouths, bringing with them any disease or infections their owners had experienced. There were alternatives available if a costly live tooth was out of your price range and the gap simply would not suffice. Porcelain, ivory or even the teeth of soldiers who perished at the Battle of Waterloo could be used to make anything from a single tooth to a complete set of dentures. These, also known as Waterloo teeth, were taken from the mouths of soldiers who had passed away and became extremely sought after. After all, a client was aware that the Waterloo tooth came from a young, hopefully healthy soldier who died honorably on the battlefield, not a man who died of disease or a corpse dug up by the grave robbers. Fashionable Georgian men weren't afraid to use some clever padding. Skinny breeches made to show off the wearer's well-defined legs became popular. But what if the wearer didn't have well-defined legs? Padding was the obvious choice for those who were too thin to wear the garment. Fabric or horsehair pads could be added to the breeches to create the illusion of muscled calves. Just as modern padded brothers. These pads can also be put in any other place a man who wears them might need a boost. Only the most fashion conscious Regency and the Georgian men wore these pads. They gained popularity among the dandies, flamboyant, highly fashionable men who wore corsets and pads to achieve the ideal male shape. So what do you think? Which of these trends surprised you the most? Let us know in the comments below. And if you are new to our channel, please subscribe and ring the notification bell. Thank you for watching.